Good morning, afternoon, or evening. QQ here again in my brand new studio with Master Editor Johnny D. Let's start with the latest Discovered Disclosure issues. This whole routine should be familiar by now. A plant's excellent article on Kickstarters and Patreons was used as a starting point for original research by Boogie Pop Robin. This is what this week's digs turned up. It turns out that Jen Frank, a freelance games journalist, had been supporting art critic, artist, designer, and writer Lana Polanski on Patreon. Jen Frank was also supporting Critical Distance, which, as far as I can tell from reading their mission statement, is a project about injecting as many buzzwords as possible into writing about games. So it should serve as no surprise whatsoever that Lana Polanski, writing in partnership with Critical Distance, decided to shill out Jen Frank's blog in a Gama Sutral article about, well, uh, I can find no cohesive theme whatsoever. I mean, the title says it's about game jams, but only one paragraph is about that. It's basically just about random stuff. The article links to Jen Frank's blog and quotes it, treating Jen Frank as both a source and a subject, and all of this without any disclosure that Jen Frank was in a Patreon relationship with her and with Critical Distance. The earth will never run out of salt, because a month later in a Twitter conversation, Lana Polanski and Jen Frank did the usual Twitter rant about how scary it is that Gamergate is criminalizing friendships or whatever. Oh, cry me a river. I mean, I know the ethics are hard, and everyone slips up sometimes, but is it so physically painful to try your best to offer disclosure in advance and to issue apologies and corrections when you slip up? And then there's this gem of a tweet. Hey, here's some advice. If you're trying to convince people that cultural Marxism is a myth, it might be a good idea not to rant about the evils of capitalism every chance that you get. The next incident found also involves Jen Frank. I'm always impressed when someone lacks professional distance in both directions. Jen Frank wrote an article in Game Ranks about Super Hexagon, without disclosing that she was involved in the production of that game. Namely, she did the voiceovers for it. So this is Game Ranks. The editor-in-chief of Game Ranks is Ian Miles Chong. He recently issued what sounded like a heartfelt apology on both Twitter and Tumblr for his dehumanizing behavior towards gamers. Personally, I was willing to accept his apology, but only for his personal behavior. In my view, his professional behavior still has a ways to go to make amends. Well, here's a good start. When he was contacted about this conflict of interest, he edited the article to add in disclosure. As Jen Frank was writing as a freelancer, this was the most he could do. I want to thank Ian for this. If Ian keeps acting in this manner, in his professional capacity, that's something to be applauded. Fantastic news, revolting consumers! Last year, Gamergate had an email writing campaign to the FTC with the purpose of bringing deceptive affiliate links to their attention. It was called Operation UV. Our favorite clickbait media buddies like Gawker had been inserting affiliate links in what we'd considered to be deceptive ways. Well, it turns out that the FTC agrees. They were in the process of revising their disclosure guidelines, and the chief lunatic on Reddit had been keeping abreast of the process. Well, last week it was noticed that their new guidelines had come out at the end of last month, and they directly addressed the concerns of the consumers participating in the revolt. The chief lunatic even confirmed with the FTC that their section on affiliate links was in response to Operation UV. Awesome job. Congratulations to everyone who participated in Operation UV. Treat yourself to something nice. You've earned it. The FTC even used Gawker, BuzzFeed, and Wired as examples when speaking on deceptive advertising practices. Those were the three example publications chosen by Mary Engel, the FTC's Associate Director of Advertising Practices, when she was speaking at the Clean Ads I.O. conference in New York City on the 3rd. Just let that sink in for a moment. The FTC's Associate Director for Advertising Practices, speaking at an advertising conference in New York City about issues that concern the consumer revolt. It makes me want to cry happy little tears. Well, by now we know that Gawker sucks at following the rules of ethical journalism. Surprising nobody at all, it turns out that they're also terrible at following the rules of their ad partners. Gawker's biggest advertising partner right now appears to be Outbrain, and Gawker have violated their prohibited content guidelines at least seven times. I'll include a link to the Kotaku in Action thread by The1899 with instructions on who to contact and how to contact them. I archived it too, so if Chairman Pao decides that the thread is interrupting the joyful and harmonious tranquility of Reddit, we'll still have all the information that we need. 
Filling out this report form will take minutes out of your day, and it can make a huge difference. So carve out a little place for yourself in internet history. A brief AirPlay update. Koretsky announced the first member of the AirPlay panel, someone firmly neutral due to knowing nothing about Gamergate, Lynn Walsh. Walsh is an award-winning journalist, the executive producer of an NBC San Diego investigative news team. She's currently the SPJ's secretary treasurer, and Koretsky predicts that she'll be the SPJ president in late 2016. According to Koretsky, she participated in the last revision process for the SPJ Code of Ethics, which took place last year. Welcome, Lynn, to Drama Central. And that's all I have time for this week. Thanks again for joining us. Remember that thing I say each week about retweets, subscriptions, and likes? Well, next week's gonna be interesting. There is already a lot of heat over the weekend. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao!